I'm sure some of you were expecting me to be a little taller listening to the introduction. I was even at some point wondering who they were introducing. Um, so don't worry, there's not much to all the... I'm a normal person on two feet with 24 hours. But it's always a pleasure to be here. Um, I heard uh, one of our directors um, threw out a challenge, and he said that maybe he would give a price, but I didn't hear him state the price. Uh, so I think you owe the Presec gentleman a price. Or do you all agree with me? Yes. Fantastic. So please, uh, Presec gentleman, please feel free to see our director so that he will honor his word to you about giving you something. Good morning to everybody. Good morning, um, distinguished people. It's my pleasure to be here. I had to leave the farm this morning at about 4 a.m. to make it here. But it's always a pleasure to be able to talk to my fellow Ghanaians, my fellow young ones, um, and to share a few of my thoughts um, on, on our journey so far. I will also throw out a challenge that by the time I'm done speaking, I will have what you call problem of the day, which will be a small question for me, and the winner would probably be able to take home one bag of nanes rice, long grain, one bag of nanes rice, short grain, one bag of siri soya, and I have some of my team here, and they know when Nana mentions an award, it equals $100. So the person who is able to answer my question at the end of my spiel wins, uh-huh, hey, one bag of <laughs> long grain, number two, <laughs> number three, number four, fantastic. So you will consider that my investment in your AFCFTA business, which you'll be starting a few months after this program. Amen? Amen. So yes, like they said, my name is Nano Sui Chow. I am um, Ghanaian born and bred here in Ghana. Um, I went to Prempe College, the real winners of the um, <laughs> National Science and Math Quiz. Forget about those who say seven glory. We are still moving forward. So I'm a, I'm a product of Prempe College all the way from Kumasi. Some people are surprised when I say I'm from Prempe because I speak English. But know that Prempe College students also speak English. While I was in school, our English teacher taught us English in Chi. So it is no lie. <laughs> that uh, Prempe College students like speaking cheap. But yes, I went to Prempe College um, a couple years ago. Um, from there, I worked a little bit at the American Embassy as a volunteer, and I'll talk a little bit more about volunteering. Um, during, you know, at the time, after SS, you had a year gap, and then you went to school. So during that year gap, I worked at the American Embassy, and then after that, I went to school in the US, um, in Michigan specifically, Calvin College. Um, I went there in 2008. Um, and I schooled through um, four years. I did three majors, which shows you how crazy I am. I had computer science as a major, information systems as a major, and business as a major, and I minored in engineering. And then after that, I had a job on Wall Street, which is where most people may aspire to go. I was there for three days. I remember being in my, um, because when we got the job, I was put in a hotel until I could find accommodation. One of the challenges I had is one evening I was hungry and I wanted pizza. And I went downstairs and asked the guy, Charlie, can I have an opportunity? Where can I find pizza? He said, it's not safe to go out at this time. At that point, I remember looking out my window and asking myself, if I wanted Wache in Ghana, it would not have been this difficult. But that, coupled with a couple other decisions about what I could foresee as the future here in Africa and the future in Ghana, got me to pack my bags and I took my luggage to work so that they know that I have really decided not to stay here. For some of you who may want some context, the amount of money I may have made in about an hour of work is what when I came to Ghana I was making as a salary for about a month. So realistically, it is fine for people to think I was crazy at the time. Nonetheless, this, this, it's a decision I will not take any differently today. And the reason is because of what I see here, what a lot of my um, seniors and what a lot of our CS and directors have shared with us here today. The opportunity in Africa is only in Africa. 
These opportunities you will not find in Asia, you will not find in America, you will not find in the UK, you will not find anywhere else in the world besides in Africa. Because today, like I was introduced, we do have a rice brand um, in the market called Nanes Rice. Nanes Rice is not that old. We started the project, we started rice farming in 2018. I moved back to Ghana in 2012, August. I started a, a couple of different things. So we started working in real estate. So we have a real estate project. There are some apartments that we have in Adrengano, in Oyarefa, in Amrehia. I do have 24 hours, and I am not that old. So we have some real estate projects that are happening. However, what happened in 2020 was very pivotal. In 2018, I made an investment in an agri project. So a friend of mine who went to school and did agriculture, he told me, hey, Nana, you should look into agriculture. And so I made a little investment in that agriculture business. The investment I made may sound big because I use the word investment, but some of you are holding investments in your pocket even at this age. An iPhone 14 or iPhone 13 is the amount of money I probably, the money to buy that is probably what I used to invest in our first rice project. When we started out, we were helping only two um, farmers. So I gave two farmers money. They got started with doing the rice. They sold the rice. Then that was how the, that business started. I started with two people. Today we are working with about 300 smallholder farmers, and we currently own about 10,000 acres of land in the Asuchari area. This rice that we own, I hope you are clapping and taking notes. <laughs> this rice that we own, today is exported. Um, we export our product now to countries like Belgium, to Germany, to the US, to the UK. We even have an offtake agreement in China. So Chinese people surprisingly actually want our local rice because Chinese people surprisingly like imported products. So we, we are even able to produce rice from here that is actually shipped to all these different countries. And this is not by any magic. It's not. It's right. It's rice grown right from our soils. And any of you can make a decision to visit our farms. In fact, I came here with three of our farm managers who are in the audience. Hello. They are called carrot, berry, and ginger. Those are their real names. And I'm sure when you see them standing, you understand which of them is carrot, which of them is berry, and which of them is ginger. And these are some of our farm managers who currently manage our rice farms on in Asuchari. So today I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself, but more importantly, I wanted to do two things. I wanted to disabuse you of two ideologies which I think are really hurting Ghana's youth. And then when I finish, I'll talk to you about some opportunities that you can take advantage of almost immediately. Then I'll ask my question so that the people can win their prizes. Is that a good plan? I hope to do that in the next 10 minutes. The two ideologies first. Number one. We have unfortunately been programmed to become a little lazy. And the reason probably is because we have fed so much information lately that we do not take time to look deep into anything. I'll give you an example. Someone today would probably want to search or learn to know more about maybe an individual. And what you will probably do is that you will go in online and go type something like, what do, what do young people search these days? Elon Musk, for instance. So somebody goes online and searches something about Elon Musk. The minute you search about Elon Musk, you get so many links that think they are giving you information about Elon Musk, true or false. So most of the time, you click on one, then when you finish, you click on another, and you click on another. And oftentimes, most of us today, especially young people, will stop there and think we have enough information about Elon Musk. However, that information was not information you sought for. It's information that was fed to you by an online portal. So when you look at a, 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 a website like Google, it works with an algorithm. When you type in Elon Musk, there are certain things that come first, second, third. There are certain things that I even push all the way to the seventh page or the eighth page or the ninth page. Now, for most of you, and I hope you know this, it is possible for Elon Musk to also design what, when you click his name, you will see. Right? So what is happening is, if you are not an intentional information seeker, information is not... You don't get the information you are seeking, you get the information you are fed. And it is important for us as young people today to distinguish ourselves from information that is fed to us versus information that we are seeking. Because in that way, we are moved by whatever is fed to the, to the Ghanaian or to the African. And I'm talking about this because we are still talking about opportunities about the AFCFTA. Why this is important is because I just came back from Rwanda. And in Rwanda, in fact, sometime last month, we had some visitors from South Africa and Congo. 
Now, when anybody hears Congo, what, do you, what, 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 what comes to mind when you hear Congo? War. Anything else? Gold. Cobalt. But interestingly, the young people don't hear about gold and they don't hear about cobalt. Why is that? Because we are fed with the information that Congo is just full of wars. However, most Congolese believe that they are probably the richest nation in Africa when it comes to resources. We will not know this because we are not seeking information intentionally about what is actually in our context of Africa. So you recognize that in this day and age, most of us are sitting back because the, the forces that be desire that you and I go to sleep on the talent, the gift, and the resources that we own and have. As a young African, I happen to also serve in Calvin University while in the US. I happen to serve as a student body president, and I happen to be the first black president in the school at the time. This school had never had a black person lead a student body before. But guess why? Because the African is fed to think that he's less than his white folks. He's led to think he doesn't have the capacity or ability to actually show forth good things. I made a commitment while in school that every Friday I will also wear African wear. I was telling a bit of my team, in those days on Friday, whether it is snowing or the sun is shining, I will wear African wear. And I'll be testing the cold inside. Because my goal and decision was that I must showcase the richness of the African continent. Nobody can do this for you. Don't expect anybody to come and pick you up and give you a scholarship to go to America. It is to their benefit. It is your good work. Like they were sharing, 20 of you have been selected to come from different schools. I wonder what the criteria for the 20 years. But it is possible that there is something in you that your teachers, your lecturers, your leaders identified in you and chose you to be here. And it's important that you seek information about what makes me special. Because if you don't come to this reality and understanding, you will always be ordinary. Let me try to fix, stick to my speech. Because we need to get to a place where we do not seek information and consume what is just fed to us with different algorithms, but it's necessary that we seek what we desire to know. Mankind isn't where we are today because of information consumers, but we are where we are today because of information seekers. People who ask the hard questions of why. Like the question I asked myself about farming. Why is Ghana using only 10% of our arable lands? There is no excuse for that. We are allowing weeds to grow even by the roadside. When we could grow even things as basic as lemon grass, which is such an important asset to the world, lemon grass. Lemon grass does not require a farmer to grow. If you like, just tear one, and some of you don't even know what lemon grass is. You just have to tear one lemon grass and put it somewhere in any black soil you see. Give it a little bit of time, it will grow a whole bunch. That lemon grass, when distilled, is expensive perfume per kilo in dollars. It's important that we become information seekers, not consumers. Because the future does not belong to consumers, it belongs to seekers. Make a difference in your community today. I'll move on to my next point. Secondly, we all don't have to start our own businesses. We are not all called to be entrepreneurs. Some of us are best intrapreneurs. I'll give you an example. Nestle, as a company, is over 150 years old. Nestle is older than Ghana as a country. It's a company. Coca-Cola is over 130 years old, I believe. 130 years old is a company. GE, the company that produces a lot of your microwaves, you have seen dishwashers, washing machines and stuff. It's called a company called General Electric. General Electric, I think, is over 120 years old as well. So the founder of the business is not the one who always continues the business. So when that founder is no longer the one there, because for instance, let's assume that I started the business when I was 25. 15 years from now, I will be 40. 15 years after that, I'll probably be about 55. So in actual fact, let's say I run the company for 50 years. At 75, I will step down. Who now runs the company? And that person takes absolute control. Because Coca-Cola today is not a local company. It's not a Ghanaian company. Nestle is not a Ghanaian company. These are global companies with, with heads of these companies in different countries. The people who run these companies are people who probably have come through the company and today have developed enough 
information, enough capacity to be able to run that entire company in a country. So it's important that some of us recognize that not all of us can start a business. And that mentality of everybody starting a business is what makes us create what we call local champions. We don't want local champion companies anymore. Local champion companies do not transcend borders. They do not fulfill AFCFTA um, um, requirements. Because if I, let's, let's take, let's take a, a brand like ours for instance. Today, we have a rice farm in the Suchari, 10,000 acres. To Saturday, I fly to Bono East. We are looking at a, a land there for 20,000 hectares. We have a call to go to Zambia sometime next month, a call to go to Congo sometime next month, and then a call to go to Rwanda. In these three countries, I alone cannot run all these businesses. It means we need people within the entity who have the capacity similarly to be able to run and operate a business in each of these countries. This does not happen if we all wake up with the mentality that we must start our own. There's a saying, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you need to go together. Some of you just need to identify some very good friends of yours. Stop gossiping and start thinking about which business to start. Because it's only in doing so and having very good partnerships and collaborations that we as a country can build multinational companies that can fulfill AFCFTA level business. Because the opportunities in AFCFTA are out of this world. The entire country's population is approximately 30 million. Like AFCA is saying, that 30 million is now 1.4 billion. So if I used to sell rice and I only had to sell to about 10 million people, now because of AFCFTA, I'm not talking about 10 million people, I'm talking about 1.4 billion people. Maybe we don't understand billion. Billion is 100 million and 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Prempe English. Thank you very much. I'm proud, I'm a proud uh, amount for. So it's important that we recognize these opportunities. These are my two disabusing facts. We are not all entrepreneurs. Some of us are, in, are intrapreneurs. And number two, please stop being information consumer. Let's be information seekers. Now going to my issue about opportunities, which is the numbers. I'm sure that's what people want to hear. The numbers. Some of our... I forget his name. AFCFT we're talking about. One in four people in by the year 2050 would be African. So in the world, if you count one, two, three, four, it is possible that one out of those four people are African. Something as basic as even African print is no longer a national issue. It becomes a global issue. How many of us remember Black Panda? What was, it? What was the movie? Black Panther. Black Panther. I decided I'll not watch that movie in a cinema. I'll watch it on my phone. The hype was too much. But a movie like Black Panther, look at how it broke the box office. Because there are so many Africans who are not just within our space in, on this continent. There are a lot of Africans, even in the diaspora, who are willing and excited to consume African content. So today, somebody can start something as simple as an African print business, where your job is just to create white shirts with a lining of African print at the collar. Let me give you the numbers because we have a fashion business, so I know some of these numbers. To make a shirt, you may need about 1.5 yards. A yard, very quality, is let's say about 30 CDs. So 1.5 yards, the answer, this is not my problem of the day, 1.5 yards and the one yard is 30 CDs, what is the price? Hey, quick math, 45 Ghana CDs. I'll take my price myself, please. Uh, step up your math ability. So if, assuming you, you, you bought a yard for 45 CDs, and one individual can sew approximately three to four of these white shirts in a day, yet a white shirt in the market today is about 120 to 150 Ghana CDs. So your actual cost per shirt is about 45 CDs for the cost of the material, true or false. Assuming that you learn to sew, you can make at least 45 to 50 CDs per shirt if only you did it with good quality. This is just fashion business. Imagine, you are, look at the number of bankers in this country. Almost all of them wear white shirts, at least three times a week. So imagine you created a local white shirt business where you even sold just to banks. What do the numbers look like? Lawyers, 
In fact, in Ghana, we like suit. It's a symbol of I'm a serious man. <laughs> so for many who are wearing suits, they are all your clients. And there are, there, are, there are certain countries on the continent where they don't have these prints that we have. And so an ability to learn to use this fashion business, to be able to create a business out of fashion, is a big deal. And for some, you will make more from a fashion business than the person who is sitting in a bank wearing your suit. But sometimes those businesses don't look as glorified. This is the time to build that capacity. In agriculture, for instance, just last month, we paid some of the people who had done some work with us on agriculture. I'll give you an example of a smallholder farmer. Some of them are not even educated. The people who are in the village. One of the ladies, one of my favorites, she's called Madame Regina. They put in 1,100 Ghana cities. We helped them to get a loan of about 7,000 Ghana cities. When she finished farming her rice, this year something good happened. You know, the price of things really went high. So rice, the value of rice went significantly higher. That woman made a profit of 20,000 Ghana cities, which means after her 1,000 out, her, she, paid, she, took, she paid off her loan plus the interest. She was holding in her pocket 20,000 Ghana cities for one hectare. And there were many of such examples. This, that woman, when you see her in the town, she may have her cloth wrapped around her waist with her 20,000 bangled up somewhere in that cloth. And you go past her, giving her very little respect. But know this, one is higher than negative 10. Because there are people in Accra who are driving in cars, yet owe, yet owe the bank or owe for the car in which they are driving. And you will meet Madame Regina in the market of, of Akusi with her clock wrapped around her, her, her waist, sitting on a motorbike, yet with 20,000 CDs in her pocket. Do not be deceived by that which you see. Seek the right information about how economies are driven and align yourself accordingly. We have similar programs like that. We have one again coming up in March. Last year, people really benefited. Most people who even did like a thousand CD investment, most of them doubled that money. Because at the time of farming, the value of rice was about 350 CDs per bag. At the time of harvesting, the value of rice was 600 CDs per bag. So there's so much opportunity available even in agricultural space. It may just mean you have to be a little uncomfortable. Education, we are talking about AFCFTA. Half of the countries in Africa speak French. In fact, when you go into most French-speaking countries, they can speak broken English. But most Ghanaians cannot speak even broken French. So you recognize that even if you are selling a product or you are trying to sell a business or you are trying to sell a service, you want to be able to go all, in fact, all of Ghana is surrounded only by French countries. We must take our French education very seriously. We must each commit to ensure that we at least can speak broken French. So that if I find myself in Togo, I am not completely lost. Where we don't even know how to say, please, where is the bathroom? Please, how much is this? We must learn to at least count one to thousand in French. Each Ghanaian. I want water. Je veux boire de l'eau. Maintenant, je parle Chinese. I just counted one to ten in Chinese. Why? I spent a month in China trying to do business. There's no way you go. When you go to China, you're trying to do business. You don't go negotiating in English. They recognize you're a foreigner. There are certain key and basic things one must do. Let us stop sitting on our oars and let's get serious. The amount of time you spend on TikTok, download the, the, the YouTube video that talks about counting 1 to 10 in French, 1 to 1,000 in French. You see how little changes, an hour a day, in fact, not an hour a day, two hours a week, will make a significant difference in your own life. And for those who say they don't have time, a day is 24 hours. You sleep for eight, you work for eight, you have eight spent doing nothing. Assuming we even sleep for eight hours, because most of us today, we go to bed at around 10 or 11 o'clock, we wake up by four or five o'clock. We have a lot of time to build our own capacity. Africa is not waiting for you. It's not going, they, are not going to hand, they are not going to hand over the, the Africa to us on a silver platter. We have a great advantage. The Secretariat is here in Ghana, but it's not enough. 
we need to make a conscious effort to make a difference. We need to make a conscious effort to add value to ourselves. Movie production. We, one of our businesses is in, is in the movie production space. There's no story about Kwekwa Nancy. Where's Kwekwa Nancy cartoon? Some of you are good at art. Why don't you create a Kwekwa Nancy cartoon? Netflix opened up an office in Africa to try to tell the African story. When Netflix comes to Ghana, or if you meet the founder of Netflix, come here today. Does anybody in this audience who is good at visual art, have we prepared documents about Konfuanoche and his story? Is there anything that is, that is centered around the fact that Ghana is actually the center of the world is right here? What are we doing with all this information? Who is telling the Ghanaian story? You may not be a very big acad academician. You are a creative. You are good with African cuisine. What is a local food? Ghana Jollof is even now added to the, the country's name. Jollof is no longer Jollof, it's called Ghana Jollof. But we are not the people who even started Jollof. But we have opportunities. We've created our own product out of rice, the seaweed soya product. It was made from scratch, from local rice. It's not Tom Brown. It looks like it, but it's not it. And we didn't stop there. We continued to innovate. As we speak, we came to the University of Ghana, working with the food science department. We are trying to create an instant version of seaweed soya, similar to Cerilac. So that what you have to do is just add, you know, yani issues here. <laughs> we didn't stop there. You see cowbell, cowbell coffee. You just pour it and add water, and that is more liquid, because Cerilac is a little thicker. We said, listen, why can't we turn seaweed soya also into an instant drink? And we're doing it. Work with the University of Ghana. Students. We have the capacity to build our own future. In fact, the agenda of the AFCFT is the Africa we want. Not the Africa the world wants for us. It's the Africa that you and I want. But this future is not going to be handed over to us on a silver platter. And it's time we got serious. It's time we built capacity. I wish I had more questions to be asked from your side. But my time is limited. So at this point, I do hope that you heard something I've said today. Because I need all of us to commit to actually making a difference, even in our own small corner. We have a woman in the driving seat uh, training coming up. Um, women on, on our farm, a lot of the women are the ones operating our tractors. We are committing to training about 20 women this, in the month of February. These programs are available. We need to build our capacity as a nation. Commercial farming is not the same as small-scale farming. You don't take the same mindset. It requires something different. Some of you, you need to go and start doing internships for free. You can start with mine. Come, apply. Say, I want to work here for one month. Stop sitting at home doing vacation, giving your parents stress. Commit to stay in the sun for a little bit. We are, not a, we are not the type of country that needs to even work too much on IT. You can grow lemongrass. Lemongrass. It's a weed in Ghana. It grows as a weed. You can grow lemongrass and sell it to companies who are seeking lemongrass. In fact, I had this challenge for schools, and I would probably throw it here. I hope that somebody here at UG or the new school or some school will take it up and take it seriously. Do you know that there's, there's a company that actually buys when you plant a tree? There's something called carbon credit. You know, there's an issue of climate change. So there are companies, there are countries that are buying what you call carbon credit. So if I plant a tree today, there are some trees that are worth $15 a year, a tree. Every school here has a compound that is doing nothing, has an, an arable land that is doing nothing. The agri department, the students on there, commit to planting even 100 trees a year. It is revenue for the students. Almost every school has a, you know, we have these debaters club, agri club, these many clubs you have... What are you using it for? Some of these clubs can actually have a lot of money, and from that, businesses could be started. Some schools can grow their own food for school feeding. They should not be relying on Ghana government to feed them. Almost every school here can start as something, something as simple as a piggery, because you have so much waste food from your dining halls. It can feed the pigs. If you don't eat pork in your school, you sell the pig. Or you sell the pork. It's not that difficult. It's not that complicated. But it takes resolute, determined people who want to change their story. And I hope you are one of them. Thank you.
Now to my question. Problem of the day. Can I please get the, 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 the song? <laughs> Presec, you are here. If prime people were here, I know they would have answered the question, but uh, they are not here. So, are you ready for my question? Your yes is not encouraged. It looks like your yes has malaria. Are you ready for my question? Yes. This yes looks like it has tuberculosis. Are you ready for my question? Yes. Go rate. Right. Which year did I finish Prempe College? 10 seconds. 10. 9. Hey, the, hand, the hands are menu. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Legon Presec. Oh, no, no, Presec for the year. No, no. If I can't even look in the Presec direction. Wow. Hey, why do you forget this answer? I think I have to say the question. There are people are too many. Which year did I finish Prempe College? They said I should give, pick a female. Do you agree? Which year did I finish Prempe College? Barry, please select somebody to answer the question. In fact, this, this lady, yes, it looks like you favor is found you today. Yes, you, the one in the nose mask, yes. Which year did I? This one is one shot. If you miss it, you've missed it for the whole Ghana. Which year? Think, think about the question well. I said, which year did I finish? Be careful about the answer you give. <laughs> I said, which year? Please prepare the dollars for them. I said, which year did I finish Prempe College? Waboka. At this point, thank you very much. I have saved myself the money because the answer is gladly wrong. And so, should I give another opportunity? Hey! No, they have to change the question. Because it's not fair. It's not fair. Oh, okay. Hey. Which year <laughs> did I enter Calvin College? Hey, still there are many hands. Your research is too your research is too fast. No, this one I have to choose a male. This young fresh boy, please, what's your name? Pardon? Komia. Bomia. Womia. Okay. Womia, think about the question properly. I said, which year did I enter Calvin College? 2008. I think. Hey, <laughs> Thank you very much, Womia. He's the proud winner of our problem of the day. Please do well to see me. <laughs> at the back for your price and please don't share the rice or the money in fact if you like you can share the rice but the money save it and start a business in fact at this point Womia has free internship access to us and please all our internships are paid so Womia please if you have interest in anything agriculture or you want to follow me for one month please feel free to see me during vacation young lady please what's your name pardon Rita, for your attempt, you also have free internship with us. And I'll give you one small series, Soya, because you missed your answer by one year. So thank you very much. Please, Womia, what's your school? Okay. What class? JHS3. That's so cute. Hey, anyway, I'm going to scanning them. Yes, Rita. I cry girls. My first girlfriend in this life. I said my, I said my first girlfriend. <laughs> so, Rita, please also know that you have access to us. Um, internship opportunity. We'll give you one small CV. So, yeah, maybe we'll also give you one kilo rice bag for your attempt. Um, so, thank you guys very much. And I do hope you have a blessed day.